So we've spent four days waiting for the weather and today looks good. So Eric plans to take off from Olney, Texas and head east. Welcome to Soar America. Eric, our pilot, has challenged himself to fly all the way across the country from the west coast to the east coast in his sailplane in a series of connected flights. His wife Julie and I are working as his crew. Join us as we soar, drive, and camp across America. Eric told us he wasn't sure about today because there's a chance of thunderstorms. Um, he calls them overdeveloped clouds. And he could see some of them to the east already, but was hoping that it would be good to get out. So he told us to wait until he said he was gone before we left the airport, just in case he had to come back. And we got back to the airport or back to where we left the other van and I turned on the generator to get some air conditioning going to keep the van cool for the dogs and like five minutes later we got the text that he was gone so he must have gotten up really fast got some good lift right away he said that he wanted to get at, to at least 4,000 feet and Julie just checked and he's at five so looks good for today um, we'll see how far he gets but we're about to get on the road and start chasing uh, the citation which i think is like a little weird jet something like that land on the way in and i asked him you wouldn't have to know if there's a hanger for me would you he said well the one i'm about to put this one in would work but it's full i'll call the airport manager so before i like two minutes after i got out of the glider airport manager drove up he must live and, nearby and he said well there's space in this hangar now can't guarantee you it'll be here you know tomorrow or the next day but at least for tonight so he opened the hangar left it unlocked gave me a cold bottle of water showed me the room with air conditioning i mean my goodness <sighs> and just a few minutes after we got in here i started hearing thunder yeah so i finally <sighs> landed because i thought i was about to get rained on Okay. And the, the, the line of showers was just cutting off any further progress to the east. So, How far did you get today? Uh, the computer says it's, uh, this is 186 miles from Olney. Whoa. Yeah. Way more than I expected. Awesome. I had to dodge a lot of showers, though. It was, as I said, I had to mm -hmm. make a lot of detours around, uh, around uh, nasty stuff and got rained on a little bit two or three times. This glider handles the rain better than the LS3 did. Hmm. Not that I want to seek out more rain. But. I hear the thunder. You want to wipe it out? Yeah. So while he's flying, Eric will send us a text that says he has made a certain airport. And that means he has the altitude to be able to glide to that airport safely. The past two flights, he gave us four different airports, one flight, and three the next. And we never know exactly how far he's going to go. This time, I think he ended up giving us six or seven airports before he finally landed at one. 
And it's so exciting, every time we get a text, we know he's flying farther. So really exciting day today with that many airports behind him. He says we're now east of Dallas. Well, Eric made it down before the storms. Had a really great flight. to our RV park tonight right as the rain started in a huge way. <laughs> Eric had such a good flight yesterday that we're going out to brunch to celebrate. Yay! We get to eat. <laughs> yes. Eric's allowing us to eat this <laughs> So Julie and I got some really cool coffees. What was yours, Julie? It is a, yep, I think they call it the Lone Star Latte. It's dark chocolate, chocolate chips, whipped cream, chocolate drizzle. I don't know what else. Right. And mine is the Blue Bonnet. And it has lavender, honey, and white chocolate. Just remember there's salty caramel on mine too. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. Celebrating in Sulphur Springs. And here is breakfast. Eric's giant stack of French toast. And Julie's cute little skillet. So this restaurant is called Haystack because they stack up the hash browns to kind of look like a haystack. We saw this neat building from across the way and had to come over and see what it is. It is the courthouse. the neatest downtown. Some of the buildings look new and seems really vibrant. <laughs> so Julie saw on the city's website that they have glass bathrooms. And there's one. And there's another one over here. So we're gonna use these bathrooms because you can see out, but you can't see in. So how weird is that gonna be? Okay, so here is the glass bathroom. Oh, how strange is this? You really can see out, but nobody can see in. So you use the bathroom in here and you can see all around you. This is hilarious. <laughs> that was one of the weirdest experiences of my life because I do actually have a recurring nightmare that people are watching me use the bathroom. <laughs> staying at the Shady Lake RV Park here in Sulphur Springs, Texas. So Brownfield is where we started on this part of the trip, on the second part after our break and we have made it all the way over to Sulphur Springs. So that is two flights 
from Brownfield to Sulphur Springs. And we are very close to being out of Texas. I think I heard it's 80 miles. And then we will be out of Texas and either into Arkansas or Louisiana. I was just looking at our flights and our trip on the calendar and it's really interesting to see April 23rd is when Tim and I left our apartment to start down the coast to meet Eric and Julie. We met up on the 5th and Eric's first flight was on May 7th. He flew the 7th, 8th, 9th, 11th, 13th, and 16th. He, he tried to fly on the 20th and that's the flight where he made it to the private airstrip. So that's the one that he decided not to use and went back to where he'd landed in Brownfield when we came back from our break. Our break was June 1st through 17th. On the 18th is when I started back down through Santa Fe and met up with them, met up with Eric and Julie back in Brownfield. The 20th of June was when Eric attempted to fly from Brownfield again but had the battery issues. So interesting to note that both of the Brownfield flights that he scrapped were on the 20th of a month. Then we had to wait around for some weather, so he flew again the 24th, 25th, and then July 1st. And we are probably one flight away from getting out of Texas. We flew into Texas on the 16th? No, it, it was the 13th. We flew into Texas on the 13th into Dell City. So we have been in Texas for six weeks and we have been out on the road um, on the trip since the first flight. It'll be eight weeks. It's eight weeks today because today is July 2nd. So this trip is eight weeks long and six of those have been in Texas. It is a big state. All right, Julie and I are out for a run today at Coleman Park in Sulphur Springs, Texas. Not to be confused with Coleman Park in Brownfield, Texas. We'll yeah. be spending a considerable amount of time. So true. <laughs> so we are searching for waterfalls. The city website said they had, what, two waterfalls? I think so. More so than one. We've gone 2.7 miles and haven't found them yet. So, still in search of waterfalls, but it's a nice trail. Lots of loops around, so. We may be still here chasing waterfalls later today. <laughs> but we're gonna find some waterfalls. Yes. We thought we heard a waterfall early on, but then it stopped, so yeah. I'm not sure what we heard. <laughs> we'll see. We're on the chase. Okay, so we found the falls, but they're not falling. And there's been a lot of rain lately, so that's kind of interesting. It's pretty. It'd just be nice to actually see the water flowing. We missed this the first time because we didn't recognize what it was. Saturday morning and time for another flight. Not high hopes for this one, but it seems like there are never high hopes for any of them. Are you just reducing our expectations or? <laughs> I've been accused of being pessimistic. Uh, I find if 
if I start with a pessimistic view, I am more likely to do better. If I start with an optimistic view, thinking it's going to be easier than it turns out being, I'm more likely to do worse. So I choose to err a little bit on the pessimistic side. But okay. today there's a, supposed to be blue skies. I doubt I'll see any cumulus, uh, a headwind, and most models saying the thermals won't go high enough. So uh, there's, there's nothing dangerous in today's forecast. So it's safe. The glider's assembled. We're here. Might as well take a shot. Maybe I can get one good thermal and make it to the next airport. Maybe not. All right. All right. Ready to tow her out. We are stopped right now because we have gotten ahead of Eric. He told us to go ahead and leave the airport after he launched. So we had a little snack, took a, a short break, and then headed on out. But we'd driven for over an hour and had not heard from him yet. So we decided to stop and check and see where he was. And in the meantime, we got a text that he had made the first airport. But we had already passed the first two. So we decided to stop. We found a spot where we're right here in the middle where we can go northeast or northwest to get to the second airport or southeast to get to the other two. So depending on where he lands, we are in a good spot to get him either place, wherever he ends up. So we're just going to hang out right here for now. We're in a church parking lot and... It's a Saturday, so hopefully we won't be in anybody's way. And we're just going to wait and see where he lands. But at least we know he has made it away from Sulphur Springs. So we're making progress. Eric landed tonight at Mount Pleasant, Texas. The Mount Pleasant Regional Airport. Tough day in the air but making progress east so for only the first time in this second part of the trip so this has been what four flights yeah so three flights in a row we have had hangers so this is our first time on this second part of the trip that we are going to take the plane apart and stow it in the trailer we have lucked out finding hangers. No hanger tonight, but landed kind of early and we have some nice shade to work in, so not too bad. Our part for last night was Ramblin' Fever. We landed in Mount Pleasant, but this is actually a little town outside of there. But still only about 10 minutes from the airport. This is the cute little laundry room. Drop your pants here. <laughs> here. We have found the coolest spots to camp at along the way. We're just amazed that even here on a holiday weekend we've been able to find spots to stay. So, we don't know where we'll end up today, 
but it is the 4th of July, so we have our fingers crossed that today will be our Independence Day from Texas. We've been here a while, so we are ready. So Eric will be flying today from Mount Pleasant Regional Airport. We have almost completed the plane assembly. Good thing we have a checklist to help us through it since it had been a little while. So Eric, I had a question for you. So yesterday, Julie and I both noticed a lot of birds and uh, they were just soaring. They weren't using their wings or anything. Is that a good sign for you or is it bad that they were low enough for us to see them? I'm not really sure, that's a good question. Uh, the birds are usually, their food is at the surface, so that's where you're going to find them the most. But the lift didn't go very high yesterday, so that could have been part of it too. Don't know. So do the birds give you any kind of indication of what conditions are like? Down low. Okay. At, what, at whatever altitude I can see them, yes. Okay. Yeah. But from the ground, uh, I like to see soaring birds. But if they're low, that doesn't tell me much. Because if I can only climb to one or 2,000 feet above the ground, that's no go cross country. Okay. We're spending a bit of time out here watching the wind sock. It keeps changing direction. It's gonna be a crosswind but it's switching between a headwind and a tailwind. So tonight, we are in Louisiana! We're out of Texas! <laughs> we made we it out of Texas, Texas, but you're a big state. We're glad to be out of you. Yes. <laughs> I did not realize how big Texas was, but... Yeah. What was that? It's eight weeks big. Yeah. <laughs> it, apparently, someone was saying today that El Paso to where the Panhandle was the same distance as, as to Chicago. To Chicago. So, that's... Chicago seems like a long ways away and El Paso must be too and we came through there. <laughs> so this just feels like such an accomplishment today that yeah. he made it out of Texas. That he worked hard to do it. Yes, yes. He it was very hard. He took off at around 1.30 and it was 4 o'clock before he had made the first airport which was only what 20 or 30 miles away? Not far, yeah. Um, so that took a long time, but then once he made that one, then he made a few more, and mm -hmm. boy, it was so exciting when we got the text that said he'd made Vivian, because that was the first airport over in Louisiana. Yeah, and we actually saw the Welcome to Louisiana sign, and Diane got a picture of it. We're yes. so, so glad she did that. We <laughs> had to document that, so really exciting, and had a wonderful welcome here mm -hmm. at Spring Hill. They were just, it, it was really neat. The, there were people who lived here close and they came right over and gave us a hanger and got us all settled for the night. Not every day a glider lands here, I guess. No. Or most of these airports we've been at. Yeah, but. it was really funny. The, the lady was like, a glider landed. They need help. And her husband said, how do you know they need help? She said, anybody landing at Spring Hill needs help. <laughs> so they've been here helping us and uh, yes. offered us to stay here and um, you know, given us some tips on places to keep the RV and um, overnight and local park. So we're, we're good to go. We're set. So far, Louisiana is great. Yep. 
Yep. Yay. And this is Diane's first visit to Louisiana, she yeah. thinks. So another milestone. Another right. state to check off. She will spend be spending the night even. Yes. In the R V. That's so, right. Um, one more thing to check off the list. So exciting. Mm -hmm. Big night. Big day. Some people who live right by this airport saw Eric land, knew that this guy was out of town and called him and he said, yeah, Eric could store his plane. So we have a hangar for the night. So did the air suddenly change when you moved out of Texas? <laughs> you know, it was actually pretty close to that, yes. <laughs> The good conditions were farther east. It took me two, and it took me about three hours to go 30 miles. And I kept moving toward where the few little cumulus clouds were, and it's like they were retreating as fast as I could get there. And finally, somewhere around the Texas border, yeah, was where I caught up to the clouds and started being able to fly clouds, and it was better. Of course, then it was so late, the day was just almost over, and this was as far as I could get. That's pretty good though. We're out of Texas. Yes. I worked one thermal really hard to get out of Texas. Mm. Good job. nice people here at the airport offered to let us boondock here tonight so we don't even have to leave to go to a campsite and we're getting a free fireworks demonstration very fitting for the 4th of July we're still getting to see fireworks thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time as we continue to soar America.